Bringing your palms to connect with the earth element and all of Mother Nature and allowing yourself to unload anything that has been any problem or obstruction that you might be feeling today. Taking a deep breath through the nose. Exhale and locating that discomfort. Maybe it's in the belly or the chest or the neck or the shoulders or the face. And breathing fully into that part of your body. And as you exhale, letting go for now, putting your troubles in a kind space, allowing Mother Nature to take it on for this moment. Breathing in. And today I invite you to breathe in through the nose and allow any sound that wants to come as you release any obstructions. Inhale. Ah. And today I invite you to join me in just a simple forgiveness cleansing that we forgive ourselves and others and others forgive us. And bringing the palms up, feeling the palms connect with one another, gently pressing your wrists into the heart center in prayer gesture. And as we fuse the solar and lunar energies, as we fuse our masculine and feminine energies, as we fuse our logical vibrations and our intuitive vibrations. Sanjali Mudra. to invite that love intelligence into our heart. And then lifting the arms up above the head, saluting the supreme reality, divinity, by whatever name resonates with you, can be your unique soul, your unique essence. And creating in this moment a sacred intention that you'd like to bring into your heart. You can also join me in bringing a simple intention of peace and well-being for all that is. And feeling connected to the supreme reality, divinity, the mystery, 
from above and feeling connected to nature, to Mother Earth, feeling our sit bones ground into the earth element and bringing our sacred intention to the earth element that that divine wisdom, that soul wisdom, the wisdom of our essence flows through us and blesses all that is. Welcome to day 80. So I want to ask you a question. Have you ever been uncomfortable while you've been seated? <laughs> it's a pretty common problem that we've all experienced, I'm sure at least once in our life. So I invite you to join me in a short vinyasa flow so we can see the difference that even 10 to 15 minutes of yoga can make and how we feel in our posture. Okay, so we'll begin in child's pose, giving us a chance to feel mother nature kiss us on our forehead. Feeling the roots of the palms ground into the earth elements. Lengthening the spine and sitting back on the heels. Taking three deep breaths through the nose. And then walking ourselves up to all fours. Now curling the toes under and keeping the hands firmly planted into the floor, still connecting with the earth element and lifting up to downward dog. And you can modify downward dog by having a slight bend in the knees, especially if this helps you lengthen the spine. Keeping the shoulders wide. Also feeling the roots of the toes grounding into the earth element. Allowing the neck to fully relax. And take three to five deep breaths through the nose. And then bend the knees and you can walk or hop the feet forward, coming into halfway lift and exhale forward, forward fold and inhale, lifting up to mountain, saluting the divine mystery and exhaling. Bringing the palms back to prayer gesture. Feeling the roots of the toes. 
grounding into the earth element. And we'll do Surya Namaskara A, Sun Salutation A. Inhale, gaze at the thumbs. Exhale, swan dive forward, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, gaze up. And exhale, coming into plank, retain the breath. You can bring the knees down to the floor. Coming into Chaturanga. Inhale, modified upward dog. Opening the heart center. And exhale, curling the toes under and coming back into downward dog. Again, feeling the roots of the fingers as you lengthen the spine, relaxing the neck, connecting the roots of the toes to the earth element. Take three to five breaths through the nose, activating ujjayi breath if you're familiar with that. And then bending the knees, you can hop or step the feet forward into halfway lift and exhaling into forward fold. And inhale, lifting up, using the core, gaze at the thumbs and exhale, bringing the hands back to prayer gesture. I'll guide you through one more and then we'll do one on our own. Inhale, gaze at the thumbs. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, come into plank, retaining the breath and then coming down to modified or full chaturanga. Inhale, opening the chest and the shoulders, upward dog, and exhale, curling the toes under and coming into downward dog. Taking three to five breaths, grounding the roots of the fingers, the roots of the toes, lengthening the spine, So we create this beautiful triangle and the crown of our head that connects with source as it bows into the earth element, connecting us to all of nature. And bend the knees, hop or step the feet forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift the arms up. Gaze with the thumbs. And exhale, release the hands coming into prayer gesture. And now we'll do one more on our own, at your own pace. And you can also rest in child's pose if that feels right for you.
and coming together in Tadasana with hands in prayer gesture, taking one to three breaths. Feeling the three parts of the foot grounding into Mother Nature. Finding that position in mountain pose where you feel at ease. Connecting to source from above and connecting to the earth element. And now I invite you to join me in Surya Namaskar B. And you can also rest in child's pose and just go at your own pace. Inhale into chair pose. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale. Retaining the breath, coming into Chaturanga, or excuse me, plank or modified plank, and then coming into Chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog, and exhale, downward dog. Lifting the right leg up, keeping the hip square, and bringing the right leg through, coming into Warrior one, gaze at the thumbs, and exhale, the hands down, coming back to plank, into chaturanga, inhale, upward dog, exhale, downward dog, and inhale, the left leg up, keeping hip square, and bringing the left foot through the hands coming into warrior one. Exhale, the hands down, coming back to plank or modified plank, lowering to chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Take three to five breaths, always knowing you can rest in child's pose. And bend the knees, step or hop the feet forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Coming back into chair, inhale. And exhale, into Tadasana. Taking one to three breaths. Again, finding a position in Tadasana where you feel at ease. So we'll do two more Surya Namaskara B. I'll guide you through one more. Inhale into chair position. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, gaze up. Exhale, and then retain the breath, coming into plank or modified plank, lowering to chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. And exhale, downward dog. Right leg up, keeping the hip square. And bringing the right leg through the hands. Coming again into warrior one. Exhale, palms back to the floor. To plank position, 
lowering to chaturanga inhale upward dog exhale downward dog inhale left leg up keeping hip square and bringing the foot through the hands coming into warrior one and exhaling down to plank or modified plank to chaturanga upward dog and downward dog again coming to child's pose if you'd like to take a rest whatever posture you're in finding ease And inhale, half or step the feet forward, halfway lift, exhale, fold forward, coming back into chair, inhale, and exhale. So for our final Surya Namaskara B, and then we'll be going into rest. So you can join or again rest in child's pose. Going at your own pace. And then joining back up in Tadasana, taking three or so breaths. Again, finding ease in Tadasana. You can move the body around. And I always have my feet hip width apart. Bending the knees a little. And then now we're gonna to come to the floor and you can come down to your knees and sit if that's more comfortable for you. Otherwise, you can lift your arms up, come onto the toes and slowly coming into a squat-like position. 
bringing the hands again connecting to the earth element thanking mother earth for her blessings and then we're going to do a five minute shavasana and then we'll come into sitting position again so again finding ease in your shavasana pose feeling your hands and feet relax feeling your head your facial muscles your eyes your ears your nose all relaxed and relaxing your neck relaxing the chest and shoulders so you'll exhale feeling chest and shoulders relax Feeling your arms down through the hands relax. Your upper back all relax. Feeling the lower back and the stomach and the hips all relax. As you exhale, surrendering to Mother Nature, the earth element holding us. Continuing to relax the thighs. The knees and the calves and the shins all fully relax. And finally, the feet and the toes fully relax. And then we'll take another couple minutes to deepen into our Shavasana relaxation.
Begin to shake out the fingers and toes. And rolling over to one side. And then planting one hand to the floor, to the earth element. And now, let us see how our sitting pose feels. Hey, I don't know about you, but my posture feels better. So, it just struck me today that this in many ways was the intention of yoga that was brought forward out of tradition as I learned long ago. And Patanjali's yoga is really focusing on transforming the mind at the deepest level, but how that's quite difficult to do if we're not at ease in our seat. And this is the beautiful word that is used in the Yoga Sutras when Patanjali expresses the third limb of yoga, Ashtanga Yoga, Asana, posture. And he uses the word stiram. And I'm reading from the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, and the edition I have is by Edwin Bryant. Verse 46 in the second chapter. Stira sukham asanam. Stira sukham asanam. Stira, a Sanskrit word that means steady. And I recall Acharya Shunya also talking about being at ease. And sukham. Sukham is comfortable, pleasurable, pleasing, and asanam posture. And so I wanted to bring that element from the Yoga Sutras that was shared with me by Acharya Shunya, which is to bring ease into our posture. And sukham is such a beautiful word. It means pleasure. It means that we like how we're feeling. <laughs> so in that regard, the fact that sukham is a word that's in this verse, we want to bring pleasure and ease into our postures. I think that's a good marker when we're in our postures, especially in more intense vinyasa yoga, to be reflective. Is this pleasurable? Do I feel at ease? And even if I'm sweating and I'm deepening into a posture, there's still a quality of feeling at ease and pleasure. And I think if we go beyond that, then we're beginning to perform exercise and then it becomes less about producing that sattva quality, that luminescent quality within us, which is coming from being in a posture where we feel at ease, we feel that sukham, that pleasure. So something to think about but ultimately, in regards to the Yoga Sutras and Patanjali's yoga, asana, posture, is again preparing our royal posture. And what that means is preparing to transform our minds so that we become royal from within. So welcome to day 80. And if you didn't participate in the vinyasa yoga that we did to prepare ourselves to sit more at ease in our sitting posture, especially when sitting on the ground. But even if we don't perform a series of yoga postures, we can still bring this vision into our everyday posture. And really what's important is that we're feeling connected both with our sit bones connecting to the earth element and the root of our body, whether we're sitting on the ground or not, is connected to the earth element. So even if we're sitting on a chair or a couch, we can bring that idea of connecting with the earth element 
And as we do that, we can feel grounded and then lifting up through the spine. So a sort of dancer posture, if you will, and feeling that the crown of our head is reaching toward divinity, our unique soul, our essence. And as we bring the shoulders back, feeling the center of the chest open, our heart center, and bringing our attention to these aspects of how we sit, even while we're on a couch. And sometimes we're gonna slouch and we're gonna sit all comfy, you know, watching our Netflix show or whatever, but just to know that we can come into this royal-like posture when we need to come in, go inward, connect both to the earth, to nature, and also to divinity. And we can even add the element of a simple mudra, bringing the individual finger to the thumb, connecting the individual soul with the universal soul. And again, a way to unplug from the matrix of separateness and connect to unity.